Hello friends and YouTube viewers, this is Chloe. Today's tutorial is going to involve some texture devving on IMVU. And once you're on IMVU, if you do not want to be disturbed while you're developing, you go up to the right hand corner here and go to creating. And anyone who tries to invite you into a room will get a message that you are busy creating. The first thing we're going to do today is to work on the typical IMVU t-shirt, which is typically the very first thing that you learn to develop. So just go over to the menus here and find Create Mode. Click on Develop New Product. And under the female tab, click on top. The link for the UV mesh layout, which uh, is the instructions that IMView uses to know how to wrap the texture around the model of the t-shirt. I will be putting a link in the description of this video. But I already have the web page open. And this is the this is the default product that we are developing off of. And this here is where you can download the texture. You just I'm not going to supply this link, I'm just going to supply this link here, which as you can see is a PSD Photoshop document format. Now why it is that IMVU only wants to support expensive software is beyond me. Because you can't make that much money solely devving or developing on IMVU. Uh, I've been developing for about two years now. Going on three. And, uh, well, as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of credits as far as developing goes. It's like, yeah, I, have, I may have more credits than just the average IMVU user, but as far as developers go, that's not a lot of credits. Because I know people who who can make decent amount of money on here developing. Uh, one developer I've spoken with. Uh, well, when you go to the different places to exchange your IMVU credits for actual money, I know a person who makes about $400 a week developing on IMVU. <clears throat> And uh, that exchange rate of trading in your IMVU credits for real money is $40 per 200,000 credits. Now this 200,000 credits has taken me about four months to get that amount. So yeah, I'm not doing anywhere near any $400 a week. And actually, I have never even traded in any of my credits for money yet. And the reason why I keep fluctuating and it's taking me to get that much is because I do, I do buy stuff that other people make as well. Plus, IMVU charges you for uploading your own creations. Well, anyway, uh, so once you have the create mode open and you're looking at the default image, you, as you can see, you can't even upload this. You have to change it for IM, IMVU to let you upload it. You cannot just remake someone else's item and upload it. You have to actually make changes to it and make it your own item. 
So open up your imaging editing software and from the this is the UV map that I said I would be providing a link to in the description of this video. Let's open this up and this is these triangles are the polygons or faces that make up the mesh or the model of the t-shirt. And this here is the front of the shirt. This is the back of the shirt. This is one of the sleeves, and that's the other sleeve. Uh, these strips here are the collar. And these strips here are... Let me bring this back up. If you scroll down here, the one strip is this edge that goes around the bottom, and the other strip is the inner side. And the reason why it doesn't just go all the way up in is because there's a rule when making 3D models. You do not want to have wasted geometry. Wasted geometry refers to polygons or faces that are not needed because they will never be seen. So in other words, you would not want to mesh if, if you were to create a shirt in IMVU. Uh, actually mesh it yourself. You would not want to have the inside of the shirt meshed because you would never see the inside of it. However, down at the bottom, you would see a little bit of the inside of it. So you would want to have a little bit going in just so that you could, just so that it won't be invisible if someone were to scroll down because without, with this two sided turned off, if those polygons were not there on the inside, uh, it would just make those back faces invisible. All you'd see is this, the front faces coming around. And as it got to right here, it'd just be white from the background. Completely invisible. <clears throat> and the techniques we're going to use for making this shirt are the same techniques that we've used in the uh, conceptual, conceptual rendering tutorial. So once you have this opened up in your image editing software, <laughs> copy this layer, and select all of the black. and delete the black. Then copy the layer again <coughs> and rename this, whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name mine uh, Mesh Guide. And I'm going to set its opacity to 50%. This way it's on top of everything that I'm working on so I can see where to place things. Just name the other one shading and this one highlights. 
And the reason for this is if you want to make different versions of the same shirt, like if you have a logo for the shirt that you want on the front, but want to have different color material under the logo, you can make just keep this image that you're creating now and just change the color underneath the logo. So it's always good to keep the file with all the layers intact. That way you can make these changes for different for different items later. On oh, these strips here, I have no idea what they are. I have messed around with these, changing their color to see if they uh, show up in IMVU. They do not. I'm assuming that uh, they're just left over on the UV image from parts of the mesh that were deleted in the final version. They don't do anything, so it does not matter what color you make these. They it does not affect anything in the product. However, as I said, these are the sleeves. It's the front of the shirt, that's the back of the shirt. And this is the inner and outer parts of the collar. And that's the inner edge. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the inside of the bottom of the shirt, where it curves back up inside. And that's the bottom edge. I am going to copy that layer. I'm going to put it under here. And basically, I'm just going to make that Material boundaries. <clears throat> now, the reason why I did that. I'm not going this will never be visible in the final product. Is when I do the shading, I don't want to have to go through and touch up all the fine detail around the edges to keep uh, the shading from spilling over to other parts. So I'm going to use this layer as a selection. so that I can delete everything except for what I want <clears throat> what I'm working with and actually these two layers here will be completely empty to start off with select all and delete delete so these are completely empty layers. I'll turn on the mesh guide. And we're going to create whatever color we want our uh, shirt to be. And I'm going to go for kind of a maroon color. Increase the blue a little bit. Maybe a little more. Kind of a maroon wine color. It's one of my favorite colors. 
just go ahead and fill that entire area. I'll go ahead and select these color pieces so I want them to be a different color. That's why I made this layer here so I can go back and use it just for selection and then go back to the well, well, it's called the background, but this is going to be the actual main layer that's going to determine the color of things on the image or the texture map. I'll make it gold. So if I save this, and test it out here. And apply changes. That's what we have so far. Pretty flat, pretty boring. And one of the things you can see, there's a little bit of shading the eye and view does, but it's not that great. So what I'm going to do in this texture is I'm going to enhance the shading on the texture itself to give it a little more depth. On this main shading layer, we're not going to shade on directly. As you, if you remember from the previous tutorials, we shade an area roughly, and then we use the eraser tool to shape out the shading, and then we merge it down. So create another layer on top of the shading layer, and this is where we're actually going to shade and turn off the boundaries and have your mesh guide open. But what we're going to do is have our brush tool that's way too big. That there's good.
and the reason why I tapered that the way I did is because where that is on the mesh, <clears throat> that's going to be like right where the armpit starts. So this is going to be like the shadow under the arm. And of course the finished product will not be at 100% opacity. It's going to be about 50% opacity. But while we're working on the layers, they will be at 100% opacity. That way when we merge down, everything will be uniform in their shading. And done with that part of the shading, so I'll go ahead and merge that down. Create a new layer. Turn on the mesh guides. And next, I'm going to be working on the shading. It would help if I went back to the brush tool. Hmm, a little smaller. And this will be a shadow under the breast. Go ahead and make this brush a little bit bigger and change its opacity to seventy five percent. Basically what that's doing is <clears throat> where the breast or where the material wraps around the breast it kind of sags in a little creating a little bit of a shadow over the tummy. Now to shade the back. Select the back area. Oh yeah, and I forgot I gotta merge that now because that is done. So we've got that shading done there. Create a new layer to shade the back. And the back is selected. And we want this back to 100% opacity. This time I want a big a big brush.
How about like that? And just go straight across. Now the reason for that, go back to IMVU's previewer, or the creep mode. It used to be called the previewer. You see the top of her back sticks out more than the lower part. So I'm going to put that in shadow. Well, we don't want the shadow going clear to the seams. We want it to seamlessly wrap around. As you see right here, there's no shadow on the side edges here except for under the armpit. So the armpit here is also going to have the shadow. So we're going to touch this up. with our eraser. And if you want a little smoother gradient, just make the eraser a little bigger. And once you're happy with that, merge it down to the shading. And then we're going to add the armpit shadow on the back. So we need a much smaller brush for that. And turn on the mesh guide so we see about where that is. Maybe about here. I'm happy with that. I'm going to merge that down. Uh. I'll work on shading the sleeves.
starts about here. And here. <clears throat> here. And over here. And touch that up. One try happy with it. Merge it down. And test out how it looks. Yeah, it's too dark, so I have to decrease it to about 50%. Adds a little more depth. We also have to add the highlights. And do that the same way, we're just going to use white <coughs> instead of black. And of course, using the mesh guides. I want this to be on the top of the breast. And we want to try to get this to be as symmetrical as possible. Again, that's going to be way too bright. 
I'll go ahead and merge that down. And adjust the opacity to 50%. And test it out. Now, these techniques that I'm using. <clears throat> you nor normally would not use in making a video a fully photorealistic animated video uh, but the reason why I'm doing it here is because I have used shader is not that great so this helps to just add a little more depth to what you're creating Now, I would use these techniques in makeup. Just using these highlights and shadows techniques, when you're actually putting makeup on someone, like if they have little chubbier cheeks than what would look good for like TV, as, as I uh, when I was at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, I took courses in uh, makeup for stage and TV. You'd use these same techniques to help make their face look a little skinnier by adding darker areas to the cheeks to make it look like they're shaded from being sunken in when they're not and then you'd use a, a lighter shade like the darker shade would be like in through here and you'd want it to line up with the cheekbone so like it goes straight down from the cheekbone and its harder edge would be there'd be a hard edge going back like kind of towards the ear and straight down and then fade in this direction and then up above that, you'd add highlights through here to pronounce their cheekbones a little more, and it helps make their face look skinnier. But you don't want to overdo it because you don't want them to look like their skin and bones. And I just took that technique and applied it to my IM view texturing and it does add more depth to the IM view texturing so I'm happy with the way that turned out so I'm going to create a new layer here and I'm going to pick my gold color. I'm just going to create a little text logo. And that is too big. That's too small. 18 might be good. And if you want to add some more effects to it, if you have Photoshop, mm -hmm. 
create like an outer glow. Normal, I'll do a hundred percent. Changes to black. Precise. And I'm gonna do like two. But if you don't have Photoshop and don't have that ability to create the outer glow effect, I'll show you another way to do that without Photoshop. Uh, delete it. Now if you've created your text, basically copy the text layer. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but I like to use the copy as what I'm going to be changing here. Uh, select the text and change the color to black. And turn off the top layer of the text and see it's black, but it's behind, directly behind it, so you don't see it. Basically, you can copy this three more times. I can use the Move tool, and if your program supports it, it makes it a lot easier. Use your arrow keys to move each one of those. layers of text Copy this one. So now you can see you have a perfect outline around that text by just copying those layers. And same thing, just save the image. Preview it in IMVU to make sure it's what you want. And then if it's what you want, you can go ahead and save as. And show you how to create an image. Okay, that's good right there. Press the print screen key when you get the pose, when she gets in the pose you want her to be in, so she's not blocking your view. And go ahead and save your file.
And as I said, with this, these layers saved like this, you can just go back in and change the base color or add additional texture, stripes, or whatever. And the, the logo and the shading will all be unaffected. Oh, wrong one. I need to create a new. And because it's when I press print screen key, that keeps a captured screen version or the captured image of the screen you were on and saves it into the clipboard, which is part of the computer's memory. And Photoshop recognizes that you have an image saved in the clipboard and it will automatically open up to the right size for the image you're coming in you're going to be bringing in. I'm going to turn off those extras don't need them and crop this down. change the image size and these thumbnail images have to be a specific size so you don't want to well yeah you want to constrain size and see I think I think we need to adjust the width of it 100 oh, nope it's supposed to be 100 by 80, so you want it, you always want it to be a little bigger when the, with the size, with the constrained size proportions. You always want whatever, <clears throat> whichever number it is, to always be the minimum height of 80 or minimum width of 100. And since bringing this to 100 brought that down to 79, then we got to change this. 80 and click OK. Put on screen, yeah, it's very pixelated, but that's the size the image has to be for the thumbnail. Basically, what I'm talking about here it's these pictures that you're creating. And if you have a logo, and I recommend making a logo, Let's so open up your logo, and I have this saved as a PNG file. This PNG enables you to have a transparent background. That way, all I have to do is drag this over. And I have my logo for the image without having to touch up anything. And then you save it as either a JPEG or GIF file. JPEG has a lot more colors. Uh, it's full 24-bit color, which is 
over 16 million colors. If we want to be technical, it's 16,777,216 colors. It's basically uh, 256 cubed. That's 256 by 256 by 256. And that's that big number. Yeah, I'm creating a folder. Tutorial t shirt. Tutorial t shirt icon. Then you can open up your folder that you have that icon saved in. Normally, I would save this in the same exact folder that I saved the texture in. Oh, yeah, I forgot to crop it. Or to change the size of it because it's not. As, yeah, it told me that it was too big. So an image and canvas size, and I want this to be 100 by 80. Now, oh, and I forgot to save it. Save. There it is. And because there's nothing inappropriate about this shirt with the image, no, nothing inappropriate about the shirt, gen general audience. And set the profit to whatever you want it to be. And set up your keywords for the keywords people type in to find your product. So I usually put in my name. And as you say, as I said, they do charge you. This is how much it's going to cost you to upload your product. No, I'm not really paying attention as to whether that changes. Yep, that changes with whatever you set your price. The more you charge, the more it's going to cost you to upload it. But once it's uploaded, every time someone creates the uh, buys it it doesn't charge you anymore you just start making the profit but yeah uploading there's going to be a one-time fee for whatever yeah it can get, get quite expensive <clears throat> but 
But yeah, you do have to have at least one credit charge to upload. And once it's done, you just Drivability would not would not affect this product as people they can't take your texture off of here anyway to do anything with it. So no sense in allowing drivability for it. If it was your own mesh and you wanted to enable people to derive off of it, that's when you would use the allow <clears throat> derivation for this product. Oh, well, don't want to allow it here. But you may want to allow people to include your product in bundles. That way, if someone creates an outfit using your shirt, they can create a bundle and charge an amount for the bundle set and they make a profit off of selling the bundle and you do too because they're using your product and you also get paid for it. So yeah, it's kind of a good idea to allow that just for that purpose. And then you'd submit to the shop and I'm not going to do that here. Oh, and with this, uh, you notice there is an opacity option here. And I'm going to show you why opacity would not be good for this item. Just create a new. And the reason why it does that is because this product, by default, has the upper body overridden, and they have it set to where you cannot change whether it's overridden or not. So you get, oh yeah, you get that. So using the opacity map for this product is not recommended. Uh, it does the same thing to sleeves. Is uh, someone had asked me to, tr to make a T-shirt for them, but they wanted it to be a tank top. So I originally tried to use this item and just make the sleeves invisible, and the shoulders were just completely gone. So yeah, this is not a good product to use. So if you are going to be creating products, when you're shopping around for the products,
like for example tank top Click on the I there for info. More information that will open up the product page. Now you may not want to actually drive directly off of this product for several reasons. For one thing, it may be <clears throat> it may be derived off of the mesh that looks exactly like that so you'd actually save money by using the same exact mesh that this person used so you look at the devoration dever tree okay they're using it. this one supports an opacity map But yeah, let's go back in here and see if it's even derivable. Because if it is derivable, ah, duration is disabled. You cannot derive off of this. So you would have to go to the duration tree and go to this product. and derive off this. Yeah, you do not buy this. And you download, right click on the image, save picture as, and then save it to where you want it. And that's the image that you would work with. This here would be the sleeves. That's the front of the shirt and they have the seam going right down the middle of the back so that's pretty easy to line up your textures with and this here would be the collar and evidently go, if we go back in here Just copy that ID number. No. Drive new product. Instead of having to click through these basic items, you can actually just put your cursor there, and once you have uh, the product ID there, press control hold down the control key and press V on the keyboard and once it loads click go if you made these sections completely black for the opacity map this is just is the shoulders are actually up on this part here uh, <clears throat> it's actually going to show the shoulders underneath from the way this is made that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll be covering some basics and blunder. Have fun and see you then.